everyone and welcome into the studio. In today's assignment, I wanted to discuss the benefits of keeping a sketchbook and two assignments that I've given students in my class that help with composition, development of thematic, how to break up space, and have the eye enter and exit a painting. There's a variety of reasons to do these exercises and there are two that I'd like to share. So what I did is take a three-dimensional object, which was a lemon, and I posed this lemon in a variety of spaces in my studio. I then took my camera, shot the images, and then uh, printed those on my um, home printer and wanted to show you how much that you can alter and change the perspective of, of a painting based on where you may stand, whether it's bird's eye view or from the ground up or angled, whatever position that you choose, you're going to change the composition of your work. So here I have the lemon, which is small within the picture plane. Um, again, I've increased the size of the lemon. I've elected to showcase the lemon more of its natural and organic shape that one would traditionally define a lemon as. Here I've turned the lemon so that you can see it's now a circular object. Here again, the lemon is something that you would be able to define as um, more traditional. Um, this is maybe you want to depart from that and break up the picture planes so that you're cropping the space or exaggerating color to change the mood, the dynamic of the two-dimensional plane if you elect to make these into larger work. Now I've moved the lemon so that the ground is defining the tone and the values very differently. So instead of it being bright and energetic, the work, I've now subdued it so that the mood and the color palette of the painting may define it differently. In here, I've turned the object so that it looks as though it's now a woman's breast. And that was something before I had done it, I didn't even consider. So being that I work figuratively, that was sort of interesting for me. Again, just uh, moving these objects around so that my geometric or um, composition uh, abstract is now different. In the second example, I picked two bottles. I put them on my table, and I happen to have blue tape there, so that was another shape, another value of color. But you can see how my eye would have to come into this picture plane. But again, you can alter these colors in a finished painting where you may elect to have a brighter color so that the eye would move in very differently because my eye is focused on the blue right now. Here I've moved the bottles, so instead of seeing the caps, I now see the sides of the bottles. Here again, moving the bottles delineates that shadow area more clearly. And here again, the way I'm seeing these bottles as a viewer is very differently here than it might be here.
And lastly, what happens when I make the bottles really small? I have a lot more ground here. Is the ground sort of visually telling to how I can respond to these bottles? Is there something in the background that references what's going on to these objects? And so I can build my painting and give it structure by defining what's the importance, what's the story that I want to tell, and how do I want to break up the space. So those are just two examples of how the eye can travel through the picture plane, how I can delineate space and provide a small series, whether it's in my sketchbook or taking these ideas and transferring those to a larger two-dimensional surface, just as a starting off point so that I can build and maybe sketch out on my canvas five or six paintings that I can start and work on simultaneously so that I can develop this series more concretely. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope to see you again in the studio.